Okay, so let's wrap up with a few more multiple choice questions. Again, I would recommend if, if you wanna try these before I go through them, great. And if you get stuck, um, unpause the video, no, no problem there. But it might be good just to practice them first on your own um, because eventually you're gonna have to do these on your own. Uh, so here we go, example 12. The table below displays information on 4,300 individuals 18 years or older interviewed during an illegal drug use, tobacco, and alcohol survey that took place in Nebraska in 1997. The respondents have been classified according to their answer to the following questions. So they were asked two questions. Have you ever been a smoker? Have you ever used marijuana? And the implication here was that this was cigarettes. So have you ever smoked a cigarette? Or have you ever used marijuana? And you can hear those are two categorical variables. Right? People would either answer yes or no. All right, and you can see where they fall into, right? They did both, they did neither, they just smoked cigarettes, or they just smoked marijuana, okay? And in terms of the method we're using here, I love these types of problems because for me, they're the easiest to identify. What method am I on? The table. I was given a table, so I don't even have to worry, was it a Venn, was it a tree, counting formula? And we'll even practice at the end, just turning the table back into a Venn, just for fun but I'm on a table problem. And I'll read the parts A and B and figure out what formula is in here that I may or may not be using. But this is definitely a table problem. So let's take a look at this. All right, so what is the probability that an individual used marijuana and smoked? So the buzzword that I'm seeing there, in addition to probability, right, our favorite buzzword, I see the and. And it's been a little while since we've done a table problem, but if you remember for the and, the and, it's a fraction you owe me. And the numerator is always the overlap between the row and the column. And then the denominator is always your sample size or that number that's in the bottom right. So let me start writing this up. So I see probability. So I'm gonna put probability of marijuana and smoked. And I know that's a little ambiguous because you, a lot of times we do smoke marijuana, but they're, they're talking about cigarette smokes here, cigarette smoking here, and marijuana use. So maybe they mean edibles or, or smoking. So if we look at this, if I want both, I want to answer yes to marijuana and yes to smoking. So here's the marijuana folks, right? Here's the yes column. Here are the smoking folks. Here's the yes row. So where do that column and that row overlap? right here at 722. So my numerator is going to be 722. And my denominator is always that grand total, my sample size, or that number that's in the bottom right hand corner of that table. Now keep in mind, in some of these tables, I might not give you the totals because you could find the totals on your own. You could add these two numbers and get that total. Add these two numbers, get that total. Add these two numbers, total. Add these two numbers, total. All right, now to figure out what decimal this would be, I'll go here, 722, 43.04, and I'm looking at about 17%. All right, it is almost Monday evening, so I will write this three decimals. If you wanna write 17%, great. Would love to see that answer, okay? All right, so we're through part A. Let's take a look at part B. This says, what is the probability that an individual used marijuana given he or she smoked. All right, so I'm seeing two buzzwords. I see probability, and then of course I see given. Okay. So I'm gonna write this up in conditional language. So this is saying, what is the probability that someone smoked marijuana or used marijuana given he or she smoked? Okay. So once I've identified that it's a conditional probability, I'm gonna go over to my probability formulas. I'm gonna make sure I use number two, not number three. I don't know that these events are independent, and actually I would bet they're not. I don't think that smoking um, cigarettes is independent of using marijuana. I would guess, just, and this is my personal bias, I would guess there's some kind of relationship between those two categorical variables. But I'm gonna use formula two. I'm always allowed to use formula two. And instead of A and B, we have marijuana given smoke, so M given S. So I will do probability of M and S over the probability of S. So let's, let's write those down. I'm gonna swap out my letters for this problem. So I have the probability of M and S 
over the probability of s. All right, so let's take a look at this. We're back to m and s. Now, I know we did m and s up here, but I just wanna repeat it because it's worth talking about. Anytime you see an and, and you've got a table, you wanna look for where your row and column overlap, that's your numerator, and then your denominator is always this number on the bottom right, or you could say your sample size. So for this probability, which in and of itself is a numerator, it's this fraction, 722, 4304. Okay, now the denominator, the probability of smoking, that's also going to be a fraction. Now when they say us, they're talking about being a smoker. So I want the likelihood that I talk to a smoker. So if we're on the smoker rows, I have the yeses here, I have the noes here. How many yeses did I have in total? Do we see 1929 out of my grand total of 4304? All right, and I know it's been a little while since we did example seven, but I said, and when you have these table problems, your denominator is always gonna be this number on the bottom right, with the exception of what we're about to do now. Um, eventually when we multiply by a reciprocal and cancel, we'll have a different denominator, but I want you to see that on the way to getting there, each of these denominators was 4304. Again, we're about to wind up with a different denominator because we're gonna multiply by reciprocals and things are gonna cancel, but 4304, 4304, 4304. But when you have that conditional probability, your denominator will ultimately change because we're limiting our universe to, from all of these individuals to just the smokers. All right, so if I write this out, I've got 722 divided by 4304, divided by, we've got 1929 divided by 4304. Dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by a reciprocal. So I'm gonna have 722 over 4304 times 4304 over 1929. And you can see those denominators divide out. So my, my fraction is ultimately 722 over 1929. All right, and when we crunch that number on our calculator, let's see what we wind up getting. 722 divided by 1929, it looks like we're getting about 37.4%. Okay. So ultimately though, if we look at it, right, I wanna limit myself to smokers. How many smokers did I have? I actually had 1,929 smokers. That's why you see my denominator here is 1,929. And of those 1929, right, I'm limiting myself to these 1929 folks. Of those 1929 folks, 722 of them also smoked marijuana. All right, so given I'm talking to one of these 1929 folks, 722 of them also smoked marijuana. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at example 13. All right, so as we start to look through examples 13 and 14, I want you to see there's no word problems, there's no nothing, right? There's no table, there's no words, there's nothing going on here. So this will be our first look at just formulas only. All we're gonna look at is formulas. There's, there's no reading, there's no graphs, no nothing. We're just gonna take a look at the formulas. Ooh, I just realized I said I was gonna do something and then I forgot to do it. So let me, we're gonna get back to the formula only, but let me scooch back down here for a sec, I apologize. What I wanted to do is the reverse of what I did in example 11. Now I wanna go from a table and I wanna just see if we can remap this to a Venn diagram. So let me scooch this up so we can just get the table and the top there and we have all the room that we can to work. So I wanna turn this into a Venn diagram. All right, so this, again, I'll, I'll rope off. This is just a separate problem. I want you to see how I can go from a table to a vent. So let me do my two circles and we will do smokers and marijuana. Okay, so how can I go from the table back to the vent? So let's think about these 722 folks. What are they doing? They are yes, smoking and yes to marijuana. So they are doing both. So those 722 folks will go right there in the football. Yeah. And then I always find it easiest next to do the neithers. These 1978 folks, they are not smoking marijuana and they are not smoking cigarettes. So they're gonna go out here in the universe. Okay. 
because ultimately I need these four numbers to get mapped to these four sections in the, in the Venn diagram. All right, let's go, we'll go with this number next. These 397 folks, what are they smoking? Let's figure out. These 397 folks, they're yes on the marijuana, but you see that they are no in terms of the smoking row, right? Yes on the marijuana column, no smoking. Yes to M, no to S. So they're gonna be over here, right? These 397 folks are smoking marijuana, but they are not supposed to be in the smoking circle, right? So using, I should say using marijuana, not smoking. All right, let's talk about these 1,207 folks. These 1,207 folks, they're on the yes to smoking, no to marijuana, right? So these 1,207 folks, yes to smoking, no to marijuana. So that's how we can go from a table over to a vent. They're very easy to, well, I won't say very easy, but they, they map easily enough, right? In terms of there are four areas on a Venn diagram, and then there are four little cells in this, in this table, okay? All right, so with that, now let's go to examples 13 and 14. Now we're gonna look at the formula onlys because we have, we have nothing else that we gotta worry about in here. There are no words in this one. So let's see what they're giving us. Probability of A is 60%. Probability of B is 50%, A or B is 90%, and then what about A and B? All right, so I've got an A, a B, an OR, and I want an AND. So the thing that's standing out to me here is I have the OR, and I'm hoping something kind of sparks in your brain, like, okay, we have something about an OR. So let's go take a look at our formula sheet and see what we have that deals with the OR. And what am I allowed to use? Well, I'm allowed to use formula one, and I see the or here, and I also see the and, the thing that I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write formula one down on my paper and see what I can do with it. Okay, so let's take a look at formula one. I know that formula one says the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. All right, so let's see what I can sub in. All right, I know the probability of A or B. It told me right here it was the number 0 0.9. I also know the probability of A because I was set up with it. I was told it was 0 0.6. I know the probability of B, it was 0 0.5, I don't know the probability of A and B, but that's okay. That's actually what they're asking us to solve for. Okay. So once I get here, this is an algebra problem. All right, it might not look like it, but let me, let me map it to something that would look a little famili more familiar. So I'm gonna come back to this, but I just want you to pretend we're back in our math classes. If I had 0.9 equaling 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5 minus X, could we have solved for x? And I think the answer is yes. So these are like terms right here. I would have done 0.9 equaling 1.1 minus x, right? And then I wanna get all of the variables on one side and all of the numbers on the other. So I'm gonna subtract 1.1 from both sides. Okay. They're gonna cancel here. So let me do on my calculator 0.9 minus 1.1. I'm gonna get negative 0.2, and I'm gonna get negative x over here. And I think when you're um, working with these variable equations, these linear equations, we tend to like to have the variable on the left side of the equation. So if you wanna write it in the other order, that's not a problem, okay? And then if you remember back to your math classes, whatever coefficient is in front of your variable, you wanna divide both sides by it. I happen to just have a negative one here, so I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one. And when I do that on my calculator, if I take that negative 0.2 number I had and I divide by negative one, I'm looking at positive 0.2. And that would be my answer. Okay. So I'm gonna replay that, but I'm gonna keep this symbol here just so we can practice it, okay? So I'm gonna say, well, if I wanna solve for the probability of A and B, I'm gonna do 0.9 equaling 1.1 minus the probability of A and B. Okay. Since this is my variable, I wanna move the constant over. 
So I want to subtract 1.1 on both sides. Okay, and when I do that, I'm going to get negative 0.2 equaling the negative of the probability of A and B. And all I want, I want this, to, this negative to go away. So if I want that number to go away, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to run out of room. I'm going to scoot over here. Negative 0.2 divided by negative 1 is 0.2. These negatives will cancel. And I will get the probability of A and B is equal to 0.2. And again, we tend to write it this way. Probability of A and B equals 0.2. So there we go. All right. You might feel it's impossible, and I get that. Right? Probability can be overwhelming in the, in the beginning. It's really tricky. All right, but there we go. So this was just formula only. They gave me three parts of this formula, because there's ultimately four terms here. One, two, three, four. They gave me these three, and I solved for the fourth one. Right? So they gave me these three numbers, I solved for x. So it was an algebra problem, but we have this probability of a and b as our x. Okay, so let's take a look at 14. 14's that much more convoluted, all right? So let's see what we got going on with 14. So here we go, we got a is 60%, this time b's moved to 30%. Here they gave me a condition, a given b is 40%, and they want a or b, all right? So I hear I want a or b, if I go to my formula sheet, because again, this is a formula only. If I want A or B, I'm going to use formula one. So that's where I'm going to start this problem, formula one. So let me write this here. I want the probability of A or B. It's the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. This is the one I'm solving for, or that I want. That's what they're asking me. So somehow, somehow in here, they must have given me these three pieces of information. I must know this, I must know this, and I must know this. Because then if I find those three numbers, add the first two, subtract one, and I'll get my answer. So let's see what we have. What's the probability of A? 0.6, okay. What's the probability of B? 0.3. What's the probability of A and B? Here's my first question, right? They didn't just blatantly give that to me, okay? And we might be like, okay, I'm stuck. And you're right, at this point you're stuck, but take note, you have not used this piece of information yet, okay? So let me put a little dividing here, and I want us to think the conditional probability, all right? So if I'm taking a look and I want the probability of A and B, all right, I wanna be super clear, you cannot use formula four right now. Please do not tell me that the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. We do not know if these events are independent. You are not allowed to just use formula four, but you're always allowed to use formula two. So I'm gonna rewrite formula two right now off to the side, and I think, I'm hoping you're seeing that A and B is in there. So let me write that formula off to the side, and we'll get going on this. So I know the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B, okay? Now, if we just kind of take a step back, if I could find the probability of A and B over here, if I, I don't know, I found out it was 20% or 30% or whatever it is, I could plug it in, right, and solve for my, for my answer for the A or B. So let's see what we have. They told me that the probability of A given B was 0.4. So I'm gonna put 0.4 right here. I do not know this numerator, but I do know the probability of B. I know that was 0.3. Okay. So this is now an algebra problem. Here is my x, right? So this is like saying, what do you do when you have 0.4 equaling x over 0.3? Well, if you remember from your math days, you're gonna cross multiply, right? Or you're gonna multiply both sides by 0.3. So when I do that, when I multiply this side by 0.3, and I multiply this side by 0.3, the 0.3s will cancel here, right? Or you can think of it again as cross multiplying. I'm gonna get the probability of A and B. And when I crunch this on my calculator, we're gonna get 0.3 times 0.4, which is 0.12. Right? And I would have done the same thing here. I would have gotten X equaling 0.4 
times 0.3 or x would equal 0.12. But look at what we've got. Probability of a and b, I figured it out. So this becomes 0.6 plus 0.3 minus 0.12. And when I crunch that number on my calculator, we've got 0.6 plus 0.3, oops, excuse me, minus 0.12. So our answer that we're looking at is 0.78. Okay. So there are two problems that are formula only. All right. And these problems, probability is so tricky in the beginning and it's, the, it's practicing over and over again that's gonna make it gel. So to give you some options, you have a probability um, homework set that you can look at with the answers up on Canvas. You have a probability um, worksheet that we're going to work on in class with the answers up on Canvas. You also have probability questions hanging out in your sample midterm that you can take a look at. There's the probability multiple choice quiz up on Canvas. So there are a lot of resources, but I want you to hear this is a particularly difficult chapter. So we just need to take a breath and, and get to work. We have some work to do. All right, thanks guys, see you soon, bye.